Was Jim Bob Duggar a cult leader in his own home? Gothard turned um, every father into a cult leader and every home into an island. There are two characteristics of a cult that IBLP does teach to fathers to enact within their own homes. Is that surprising for you to hear me say? You'll see what I mean in just a minute. You just saw a clip from Shiny Happy People, the hit piece docuseries on Amazon Prime targeting the Duggar family to spread a narrative that Christians and homeschoolers are abusive and neglectful. They framed the Institute in Basic Life Principles Organization, or IBLP, a Christian organization that the Duggars are involved in, as a cult. And Bill Gothard, the leader of IBLP, as a sadistic cult leader and sexual predator. In the last video, we looked at the six fundamental characteristics of a cult. Number one was a charismatic leader. Number two was dictatorial control by that leader. Three was isolation from family and friends that are not involved. Four, no tolerance for questions or criticism of cult practices. Five, unquestioned adherence to the leader's dictates. And six, punishments for leaving the group or not adhering to dictates, such as shunning, isolation in some way, or even violence. So, if Gothard turned every father into a cult leader, that would mean he advocated for all six of these cult characteristics to be within each home, with the father being the charismatic leader. Now, if you didn't see the last video on this channel about what a cult is and how it is defined, you might want to go check that out first before watching the rest of this one. So did Bill Gothard advocate for every father to be a cult leader? Looking at the list of qualifications for a cult, the first one might be true. We would hope that every father would be charismatic. The definition of that word means exercising a compelling charm which inspires devotion in others. I would say that Mr. Gothard probably did try to help fathers have that characteristic to inspire devotion from their family members. I think most people would see that as a good thing. So obviously number one is a yes. Number two is dictatorial control. In the IBLP Men's Manual, Volume 1, the very first thing that the reader is instructed to do is turn to page 132, where it makes very clear that a father is not to demand to be heard. He is to earn the right to be heard. Further, on page 139, it says, No father should expect the right to be heard, and he should certainly not demand it. He must earn this privilege by developing a relationship with each one in his family. When a father earns the right to be heard, he must cherish that right and not abuse it. That does not sound like dictatorial control to me. If a father was in a home demanding control, he was not following what IBLP clearly taught in the basic instructions they had for men. A cult leader does demand to be heard and expects all his followers to listen immediately. So number two is a no. Number three, isolation of family and friends that are not involved. Did Gothard teach that fathers should isolate their families from others? The Duggars were the poster children for the Institute. Since Shiny Happy People suggested that the Duggar family was the poster family for IBLP, we can look at how the Duggar family dealt with their extended family members who were not involved in IBLP. Their cousin Amy clearly had access daily to all the Duggar children. She was in their home constantly. Amy isn't the same way as us, but we still like her. <laughs> I am Jim Bob's niece. I'm the oldest out of all the kids. The way that I was raised was rock and roll. You know, this is life and enjoy it. Teenage years was Jonathan Taylor Thomas posters on the oh wall Lord. and in sync and all the boy bands and their boys. I had my first boyfriend when I was eighth grade. Have you ever kissed a guy? Yes. Sorry, I'm Michelle and Uncle Jim Bob. But I loved my cousins and I loved my family. I was over there every day but every aspect of their life was completely different than mine. From their example, I don't see IBLP telling families to isolate their children from family and friends, but I do believe there were families involved in IBLP 
who chose to isolate their children from others in an unhealthy way for fear of bad influences. In researching this claim, I decided to email Mr. Gothard and ask him if it is true that fathers should isolate their family members from others to keep them safe from harmful influences. He wrote, quote, I taught all students and families to reach out to other families. One of the instructions on doing this was how to give a perfect greeting to everyone with whom you make eye contact. This is certainly not keeping families away from other families. So if a father was isolating his children from family and friends to an extreme, that was definitely a problem. And the problem of it was a mistake on the part of the father. Gother didn't teach to isolate children from family or friends, or to make the home an island in the context Joshua P. suggests. To make the home a haven from worldly influences? Yes, I would say Gother did teach that, but not to isolate everyone from others. So number three is no. Number four and number five can go together here. No tolerance for questions or criticism of cult practices and unquestioned adherence to leaders' dictates. Context really matters when considering these two things. I guess it's that way with all of the points, but this one specifically. I just want to add a personal note to this one. I'm not here to say whether or not IBLP teachings are true or not true, good or bad. I'm here to say whether what someone is claiming is an IBLP teaching is actually an IBLP teaching or not. But on this one, I want to speak about a personal opinion because I generally teach parenting on my Mommy Answer Lady YouTube channel and website, so it's very important to me. I do believe it is important for a child to learn to obey their parents and not question and criticize what the parent is telling them to do at every turn. But I also believe they should feel free to ask questions and voice their concerns with the right attitude. For example, if a parent tells a child they need to go to bed, it's not appropriate or acceptable for a child to argue and question why over and over again. They should know to obey that instruction without a lot of fuss and pushback. On the other hand, if they do sincerely want to know why they are to go to bed at a different time than their parents, they should be able to ask that with the attitude that they're going to comply regardless of the answer. And a wise and loving parent should be able to discern that attitude and explain to their child how they need more hours of sleep than an adult for their growing body to be healthy. But once that's explained, questioning bedtime every night is not acceptable. So context matters. Does IBLP teach that a child should learn to obey their parent without question? Sure. I think they do from what I have read when it comes to little ones. But in context, that means in similar circumstances to what I just described. If a child felt that they could never question anything that was taught by their parent, again, that was a parent issue and not what IBLP taught fathers to do to their children. In fact, in the Men's Manual, Volume 1, it states, learn to see situations from your family's viewpoint. Wouldn't that mean any person in the family would be able to voice their concerns and ask questions about what was expected? It seems so to me. A father can't learn their family's viewpoint without that kind of interaction. Obviously, questions and discussions about expectations would have to be allowed and encouraged for a father to see situations from his family's viewpoint. The manual also says, find out what offends your family and correct it and humility must be demonstrated by the father in admitting when he is wrong. At that moment, the father could have solved the problem. He could have simply said, son, I did not mean to do that. I promised you a fishing trip. I didn't do it. Would you forgive me? Would I was wrong? I was wrong. Will you forgive me? Seven words, the hardest words in any language to say because it goes against our natural inclination. We have the idea, especially a, a father has the idea, if I admit I was wrong, I'll lose the confidence of my family. The opposite is true. Fathers, if you admit you are wrong, 
you will gain their confidence. Gothard even taught that children should sometimes disobey what their parents want them to do if they discern it isn't the right thing. You see, and this is very important, if your parents tell you not to marry a person, you can be sure it's God's will for you not to marry that person. It's either not to marry that person or not to marry at this timing or not to marry in the procedure you're following. One of those three. But if your parents tell you to marry somebody, that may not be God's will. Because maybe you're very unhappy. And your parents figure, let's get them married so you can get happy. Which maybe is not going to be the answer. But they're only trying to solve a problem they see. And their way of solving a problem is to tell you to get married. That's why it's very important for you to discern, are there blind spots that are causing your parents, or causing your boss, causing others to tell you to do something which you know is wrong? Does that sound like Gothard is teaching that children should blindly and robotically obey their dictatorial cult-like fathers? And what about wives? Did Gothard teach that wives are supposed to unquestioningly obey all the dictates of their husbands? He obviously believes that the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is head of the church and gave his life for it. But did he teach that a wife is supposed to obey the husband as a cult leader, blindly and without question? And again, we are not talking here about blind obedience. We are talking about a spirit of obedience. As we mentioned last evening, a wife with a spirit of obedience, a desire to obey, is able to say no to evil and be respected for it. But a woman or anyone under authority who has blind obedience can do what he's told or she's told and not be respected for it because those in authority will understand the spirit behind the response. Clearly Gothard did not teach that wives are supposed to treat their husbands as cult leaders. They are to decide whether or not to do what the husband is asking and consider if it is right or wrong before complying. In fact, not only that, he also taught that men should listen to their wives' counsel. Um, also though too, men, and we'll get to this, oftentimes God will give your wife cautions, especially in business that he won't give you. And it's very important for you to get counsel from your wife to find out what God's saying to her before you make a major decision. And he won't tell you, but he will tell. So it, that's why God brings the husband and wife together. They each need each other. And by the way, men, please, again, listen to the counsel of your wife, especially when it comes to business decisions. Any number of men that I know would be here to confirm that if they only would have listened to the caution of their wife regarding a business decision, a situation of taking somebody into the business, or of buying a certain business or something else, you would have saved yourself thousands of dollars, tens of thousands or whatever, and saved yourself all kinds of trouble. And again, God will give your wife a caution he won't give you because he wants you to appreciate your wife and know that you, he's put you two together as one. And you need her just as much as she needs you. So you better listen to that caution. Additionally, religious cult leaders place themselves between God and their followers and even sometimes say they are God in the flesh themselves. Did Gothard teach wives to look at their husbands in this way? Now, first of all, Scripture talks about husband and wife having direct access to God. A wife does not have to go through her husband to get to God. She has, there's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So that's our relationship with the Lord. That's the first thing. If someone is being honest about what was taught by Gothard, they would have to admit that he did not teach that a man was to be a dictatorial cult type leader. That just isn't true. When looking at Gothard's teachings and the materials in IBLP, I don't see the attitude that a man is supposed to dictate to the family and they are supposed to robotically and unquestioningly obey. From what I can see, if a man was involved in IBLP and listened to what Gothard taught, they should have learned not to behave like that. 
because that is the context and spirit of what was taught to fathers. But again, some fathers who were involved in IBLP may have behaved that way, and I'm sure some of them did. I've seen men not involved in IBLP at all behave that way. So number four and five are no. Those things were not a part of what Gothard taught fathers to behave like. The last one is number six, punishments for leaving group or not adhering to dictates. This is one part of a cult that would of course be true of parents too. That does not mean every parent is a cult leader. But clearly if a child is not obeying a parent, they do need to have consequences to that behavior. A parent is in a position to dictate to a child what's expected because they do have the responsibility and authority to raise the child and guide them into doing what they believe is right. So number six is a yes. Gothard did teach that parents are responsible to teach their children to be obedient. And a child does need to stay in the home until they are no longer a minor. So you could even argue that there were consequences for leaving the home. But you can see that it is not true that Gothard turned every father into a cult leader and every home into an island. That just isn't true. And you can see that clearly by looking at the seminars and the IBLP materials that were written specifically for fathers. This is just another lie and misrepresentation told not only in shiny happy people, but also by rebellious and angry grown children of fathers who did not follow IBLP teachings. Next time, the Duggar boys went to the Alert Academy. Alert is Gothard's paramilitary organization. So, you know, Alert <laughs> sounds really cool. Um, militia of homeschooled boys sounds a little scarier. Is the Alert program a paramilitary organization or a militia of homeschooled boys? Find out next time. Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.